Yo, what's going on guys? Arax here and welcome back to another video for Monster Hunter Double Cross. If you guys have missed the news and the excitement surrounding the recently announced expansion, then there are already a couple of videos over on the channel for you guys to catch up on. But in this video, I thought I'd break down some of the most important parts and talk about five ways that Double Cross is going to improve on the current versions, i.e. Cross or Generations. If you guys do enjoy this, then a like would be super appreciated and be sure to comment down below and let me know what you are most excited to see in this new expansion. So, coming in at number 5, this is an obvious one, but G-Rank. G-Rank is something that people have been asking for ever since Cross was announced, and while it's not exactly new for a Monster Hunter game to release without G-Rank, we've had it quite a lot in the past, Freedom 2nd, Portable 3rd, Try, 4, etc. It is one of those things that in the West especially, people have become accustomed to. They see G-Rank as this kind of new tier of difficulty that once you get to the end, you hit G-Rank, not necessarily everyone gets there, but of course that is what people perceive to be the true endgame. And while Monster Hunter Cross did introduce the Deviant system, which at the very top level can be somewhat comparable to some of those G-Rank challenges, maybe even guild quests, it is understandably not quite the same thing. So it goes without saying that G-Rank is going to be an exciting new addition for Cross because Cross is already a pretty substantial game. There's a lot of stuff to do, there are a lot of monsters, however, G-Rank brings with it a new tier of difficulty, new quests, new armor sets, because of course do bear in mind that unlike low rank to high rank, G-Rank armor sets are actually distinctly different and look rather unique, so that means any of the armor sets you currently like in high rank, say for some of the flagships, Glavinus, Gamoth, Ryzex, etc, they will all have new G-Rank armor sets which will look different, which means there's going to be a whole load of new stuff to collect, of course weapons on top of that, and loads more stuff on top. Also don't forget that G-Rank expansions in the Monster Hunter universe typically add you know, things that we haven't had before. So in something like For Ultimate, that bought with it Gogmazios. In Freedom Unite, that bought Nagakuga. So for anyone thinking it's just going to be a sort of difficulty increase with, say, the same monsters, do not forget there is actually going to be a lot more stuff added. As for number four, new and returning areas to explore. Now this is kind of a given, but when you do play through Monster Hunter Cross and you get used to and you get accustomed to all the different areas, then it kind of gets to the point where everything looks the same. So when they do throw in a couple more areas, even if it is only two, they are still new places we can explore, new places we can fight monsters, and things that do just mix it up, make it a little bit more exciting. And one of the areas we saw, the desert one, is actually a returning area that was in, I believe, Freedom 2nd. However, the new kind of temple area does look pretty cool. There's, of course, this big spire, which I'm hoping you can jump off of. They didn't do it in the demo, but needless to say, it's going to be nice to have somewhere else to fight. As for number three, Prowler styles or abilities. Now, I say it like that because we don't know at this current state whether Prowlers are going to get styles or abilities, but if you saw the trailer... Then you'll know there was a segment where a Prowler clearly jumped off a monster in a very typical aerial fashion. There was also a second one where they Adept or Bushido evaded and then rolled into kind of like a bomb attack. Now, this could well be styles for Prowlers, or it could just simply be an ability that you can kind of teach your cat that allows you to do this. Truth be told, I would probably lean more towards the latter, because I feel like if they were genuinely going to add styles for Prowlers, they might have made a bigger deal of it in the trailer. But... Until we find out more, of course, we don't know. But either way, for those of you guys that do spend a lot of time playing Prowler or maybe even main Prowler, Double Cross is going to bring you new ways to play. Moving over to number two, of course, this is an obvious one, but more monsters. We've, of course, seen new and returning monsters in the trailer. We've seen this sort of jet like dragon, which is one of the two new flagship monsters on top of the Deviant Diablos. However, as well as that, we have seen Baroth and Barioth, two of the returning monsters. And, of course, in a reveal trailer, they're only going to show you a snippet. So it's fair to assume that there will be many more on both of those camps. The exciting thing that I'm thinking about is if there's a new Deviant, like Deviant Diablos, then hopefully that also means on top of the new monsters we're also going to see some new Deviants, because there were some glaring omissions in the kind of first pool, like I'm really hoping for a Lagiacris Deviant, that is just a monster that I feel really needs one and would just be super awesome to fight. But of course on top of that there are still so many other monsters that have yet to be touched. Also do bear in mind that currently in the game, of course being only high rank, Deviant quests cap at level 10. But given that they are going to be introducing G-Rank and that comes with a new tier of difficulty, it would of course mean that all the Deviant sets would be redundant when you start getting your G-Rank gear. So it's probably safe to assume that there will be new levels for Deviants. Then finally in at number one, this is the big one, two brand new hunting styles. Hunting styles are of course one of the massive new things in Monster Hunter Cross and Generations that heavily change the way that we play. Striker, Adept and Aerial of course on top of Guild. But this new one introduces the Brave style, which I've done a complete breakdown of based on the information we currently have. And that's over on the channel. You can find that link down below as well. And there is this second style that they teased at the very end of the trailer, which you can see here, where you have a hunter shaking a barrel. Now, I honestly have no idea what this is right now, and they are not talking about it just yet. It's basically their mystery style that they're going to speak about at a later date. Whether that barrel means it's some kind of bombing style, whether it's something crazy like 
Hakan, where you can pour oil on yourself and slide around the arena. Probably not going to be that, but either way, we don't know just yet. However, again, for any of you guys that have kind of got accustomed to weapons and got somewhat set in your styles, then this is going to give you a new way to play and mix things up and again, give you reason to try different weapons. That's one of the greatest things about Cross and Generations that I really enjoyed was that the introduction of styles just encouraged people to try out so many different weapons because there may well have been a weapon that you didn't necessarily consider trying before when you were just rooted to the ground, but throwing something like Aerial or Adept and suddenly it became a lot more accessible. So two new styles will definitely do that again. And that's pretty much it. That was just a quick look at five ways that Monster Hunter Double Cross is going to improve on the current version of the game. If you have any questions, by all means drop them down below. Again, if you want to catch up on any of the other videos, then you can find those over on the channel. But for the time being, thank you for watching. Take it easy. Catch you next time. Peace out.